D-Lo 404 Boxing. Shout out to the LDBC. Hey, shout out to Marlo's Corner. Um, if you haven't subscribed to Marlo's Corner, go over there and subscribe to him. Check them out. My favorite channel on YouTube, without fail. They're always going to come with that hot content. And also going to have those uh, live, live streams during the fight. Where the fans can uh, come and listen to blow-by-blow -blow commentary from Trey X. And um, have an engaged com engaging conversation with the panel. Just a good overall experience on, on a fight weekend. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll be calling the um, Keith Thurman host to see the Lopez fight this weekend. Which brings me to the topic of this video. Okay, so Keith Thurman is... Um, you know, has his, has his fight with uh, Jose Cito Lopez coming up third, coming up this Saturday. I'm sorry. And uh, Thurman, I, I was reading an article on Boxing Scene. Shout out to Boxing Scene, where um, Keith Thurman was actually was talking about. You know, he said Jose Cito Lopez has a lot, lot of holes in his in his game. You know, a lot, of, lot of ways that he feels like he can beat beat uh, Jose Cito Lopez. A lot of different ways he can break him down, get him done. Um it's good to hear Keith Thurman talking with confidence. I mean, it's good to see that he's actually about to have a fight. We've been down the road a couple times since his hiatus. But we thought he was coming back, and he didn't come back. And he thought he was coming back, and he didn't come back. So it's good that the fight's about to happen. It's good that Keith Thurman's about to, um, you know, step back into the ring for the first time in nearly two years. But at the same time, Keith Thurman... Your whole tough guy facade and fake bravado and that brass talking has holes in it. You know, um, I, I saw an interview where Keith Thurman doing the workout and stuff, and he started talking all kind of greasy about Adrian Broner. Well, we all know Adrian Broner has has lost, um, lost or either had a draw in in, in most of his top fights as of late, probably every top fight as of late. Last time he got a W, if I'm not mistaken, was Adrian Donato's, and that was debatable. Um, I may be wrong, he may have had one since then. But anyway, you know, one thing you can't say about Broner is that he duck and smoke. You know, Adrian Broner is willing to get in there and mix it up, win, lose, or draw. You know, and uh, he, he's going to He's going to sell the fight, first and foremost. And he's going to talk. He's going to talk himself up and have, a fan, have some fans thinking that, okay, it's going to be this or going to be that, you know, before the fight happens. It gets people interested in the fight. Now, how the fight plays out is how the fight plays out. But that said, Keith Thurman, you're not in a position to be uh, talking down on Adrian Broner. You're not in a position to be, you know, hating. I mean, that's basically what it is. You're hating on Adrian Broner. I mean, Adrian Broner, Adrian, he, he, I, I understand Keith Thurman probably wonders how, having, having done the things that he did prior to his exit, prior to his, his hiatus, how he was never able to get a fight with the Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather, but a guy like Andre Berto got that Floyd Mayweather fight before his, his retirement. And then Adrian Broner gets a Pacquiao fight coming off of um, coming off of a draw. I think I want to say the last. I think I may be wrong, but I think the last Broner fight prior to this fight was the um, draw with Jesse Vargas. I could be mistaken. I, I can't remember. Yeah, I think I think it was the draw with um, Vargas was was Broner's last fight. But anyway, if it wasn't, forgive me. But. Uh, Anyway, you know, I can understand him having having those questions in his head and even speaking, you know, speaking those questions out in the open. But the criticism of Broner that, you know what I'm saying, his talking down on Broner, I understand a lot of us feel a certain way about Broner's antics and stuff like that. But I also feel like when, when you know, Keith Thurman is in a position to, to be speaking down on how someone conducts himself. I mean, we, we've, Keith, We've seen and heard all this before with you talking tough as it, when, it, when it pertains to somebody that's not Errol Smith Jr. You know, um, 
I mean, the fact is, I, I don't care what he does, who he beats, or or what he what he says about this person or that person. Until he gets in the ring with Errol Smith Jr., he, he won't have my respect. You know what I'm saying? I, I respect him, you know, as I respect all people. But as far as respecting him as a fighter and, a, and as, a, as a, a, a blood and guts warrior, contender, you know what I'm saying, a top fighter, I, he don't have that respect for me. And, and the reason I say that is, is we've seen, we saw how it all played out. You know, the man told Errol Spence, you know, hey, hey, young buck, you get a belt. Um, you know what I'm saying? Get you a belt, and uh, we, we can fight. You know, Errol Spence got a belt, and it was on to the next excuse. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I don't respect that, man. He, I mean, you know, I mean, honestly, even when you look at them face to face, when they're in the same area, same vicinity, Errol Spence talks to him. You know, Keith Thurman talks about Errol Buck. I mean, not Errol Buck. He talks about Errol Spence. You know, in this uh, young young buck, blah 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 blah, talks to him, talk down as if he's like some OG, and you know, uh, Errol Spence is somebody coming up under him. But the reality is that you know, what I'm saying they're, they're right around the same age. Keith Thurman may happen by eight a year or two, but it's like he tries to son Errol Spence when he talks about it. But in, in actuality, Errol Spence sons him to his face. You know, Errol Spence told him to his face that. As long as he's in the division, you know what I'm saying, Keith Thurman's going to get injured again, fake another injury or retire before he fights him. And you know what I'm saying, and, and Keith isn't the only one, but the video's about Keith. You know, but it, it, it's hard for me to respect you, you know, talking slick and talking greasy about somebody else when there's a man walking around in your division who, um, who you seem to not even want to engage in in terms of uh, in, in, in terms of uh, argument, you know what I'm saying? I don't even want to don't even want to have a don't even want to have a back and forth conversation with him about fight. It's, it's a bunch of deflection and you know sidestepping or whatever. I'm not even going to talk about what happens when they get in the ring. I'm just talking about the fact that he shows no even his two faces, man, whatsoever. But he talks the way he talks about everybody else, you know. Um, you know, one thing, another thing that stands out to me is that, you know, Keith Thurman, coming back off his injury, he's talking all this noise about being the king of the division, and he's the man until somebody beats him, this, that, and the other. Nobody beat me, so X, Y, Z. You know, Keith, you, you um sitting out almost two years, you didn't give anybody a chance to beat you for two years. You know, it's not like you beat them. You know, um, you had opportunities to face these people that didn't face them. So in, in that, you know what I'm saying, in that regard, I, I can't respect this tough talk. You know, the bottom line is, and I said this in a video, you know, months ago. When Errol Spence is around or his name is mentioned, Keith Thurman could be talking like, yeah, man, I'm the bad man on the block, blah, 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 blase, blase. Somebody walks up and says, Errol Spence. And Keith Thurman start, turns into Captain O.G. Reborn from the old 1980s, um, 80 cartoons. You know what I'm saying? Start talking in riddles. You know, talking in circles. Says everything, but I'm willing to get in the ring with that man. You know what I'm saying? So if, if you're not going to talk that way and conduct your, yourself that way when it comes to Errol Smith Jr., I don't want to hear it about Adrian Broner. I don't even want to hear it about your upcoming opponent, Jose Cito Lopez. Be humble. Be respectful of the man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and go out there and do your job. But kill it with all this tough guy talk, Keith Thurman. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and lastly, for the way Keith Thurman was talking, you would think Keith Thurman was coming back facing a top contender straight away. I would have more respect for him should he done, have done so. I would I would be more I would, I would be more um accepting of his tough talk if he was actually fighting some top guy. But he's not. He's fighting Jose C. Lopez, who's, who's pretty much lost every step up fight he's ever had. And, and pretty much was knocked out in all of them, with the exception of his fight against Victor Ortiz. But he, he knocked, he um, broke Victor Ortiz's jaw and stopped him. I mean, much respect to Jose Cito Lopez. We know he comes to fight. We know he'll fight anybody. I, I hope for the best for him. And uh, honestly, with the way Keith Thurman is conducting himself, even though it's not good for the division, I, I, I hope Keith Thurman loses. 
You know what I'm saying? Or at least I hope he's humbled in that fight. I mean, you can't stay out two years and then come back talking like you're the big bad guy on the block. You know, and that, and there was nothing stopping Keith Thurman from coming back, taking one of the top guys, taking a fight with one of the top guys except Keith Thurman. And for anybody who says that, oh, you can't take two years off and just go back into some some fight with another champion or go into a fight with a, a top contender, Vitaly Klitschko took four years off and came back. His first fight back went after his old title, his old title. He was champion in recess, just like Keith Thurman for the WBC. And his first fight back, he went and fought a killer in Sam Peter, who was knocking guys out left and right, guy who Vladimir got a decision over but got dropped like four or five times in that fight so that that that's heart that's true grit that's guts you know what i'm saying keith thurman ain't, isn't displaying that by fight jose C. the lopez and uh black uh vitaly had all kind of injuries and surgeries while he was out but was willing to get in there with the champion when he came back only only better fighter that he could have got in the ring with would have been his brother so, saved from his brother, he got in got in the ring with the next best fighter in the division and, and, and stopped it. Keith Thurman, you're not doing that kind of stuff, so don't talk like you are. I mean, that's all I'm going to say on the subject. Hey, shout out to the LDBC once again. Hey, shout out to my subscribers. Anyone that has subscribed to the channel, ask you to please subscribe, hit that bell icon. Hey, um, if you're feeling the video, drop a comment in the comment section, hit that like button for me. It's D-Lo 404 Box, and I'm out. Peace.